first thing we need to do is start defining some of the buttons that we know we're going to use. So let's use uh, the button um, compute. Okay, so let's set up the variables and all of the IDs are with them. So B underscore compute is for the button. So we will find the ID number in the layout. IV underscore needle, of course, is for the image view of the needle. And then uh, we've also got some edit text items. So these are the data entry fields. So they are also named ET underscore with uh, your name and other person's name. And so then we have to put them in the uh, actual uh, layout IDs as well. Okay, so the uh, item that we're going to listen for for the click is the button. So let's add an, an event listener. When we click the button, we're going to get the two strings that the user entered, which is the two names, and then we'll compare the results and we'll spin the dial based on the, uh, the compatibility number. So let's get some strings defined. Okay, so we have two strings. Now we're going to compare those two strings to see how similar they are. Okay, so here's the formula we're going to use to compare two names. We're going to look at each letter of the name. And so when we find a match, we'll add one to a score. So in this case, we found one G to match the first jo of letter of George. And so we'll give that a plus one. So we have a total of one. Then we go to the second letter of George and we look through here and we find we've got one and then we have another E there. So that's two more matches, gives us a total of three. We move to the next letter and we find a match of an O. So there's a plus one. We move on to the R. There's no matches in Henoveva for zero extra and so we stay at four. The G again, we get a plus one because there's one match and we get a total of five. The E's, we get two more matches here. So we got Hanoveva's got two E's in it. And this gives us a plus two for a total of seven. Now, let's switch the names and let's go through Hanoveva letter by letter and look at George. And so we're gonna give this a plus two for the G. And then the E's are going to give us an also a plus two. And so we're getting up to 11 now. The N, we get strike out with N, there's nothing there. We go to O, we get a plus one. The V, we get nothing. And then the E, we are going to get something. We get two more on E. So you can see we're just looping through the words and we're trying to find letters that match. So when we get done, we're going to have a total of 14 matches. So if we add up the total letters of Henoveva and George, we're gonna get 14 letters. Now we found 14 matches. When we do a division, we get 14 divided by 14 is a 100% match. Now, that is a pretty good match. So Hanoveva and George are gonna come up really high on the match. However, here's another pair, Jack and Jill. You can see that the letter J matches in there, so we get a two matches out of eight letters and we'll get a 25% number. And so Jack and Jill kinda of come out a little bit less than you'd expect. Okay, now let's get back into our program. How are we going to implement that counting routine? Well, we're going to get a, uh, two loops going on here. So let's come up with a couple of uh, variables. Let's go with a, we'll have a total letters. And uh, that total letters is going to be the total letters of both names. So let's uh, take our your name. And there is a function there that tells us uh, how many letters are in there. It's just the length. So we'll do length of one word times the, uh, or plus the length of the other. So the other person name, and we'll add their length. So now we have the total letters. That one is pretty easy. Let's do total matches now. Let's start with zero, and we're going to start looping through these things. So, so we're gonna use for loops here. And we're gonna actually end up doing a double for loop. And so now, how are we gonna count? We're going to use an I for our first counter, and let's use J for our second counter variable. Now, I is going to be starting from zero, and I is going to be less than the your name, and let's make the increment by one. So the second is going to be J, so J starts at zero.
Okay, we've got an error here. We have to have the length. So we have the length and not just the, uh, the string. So now we're going to check if the letters match. Okay, so you can see from the code that we're looping through the uh, first name and then we're looping through the second name and we're counting the total matches. Now let's copy this because we want to use the reverse. We want to copy and paste so we can look at these names in a different order. So let's look at the other person's name and then look at your name. So just reverse everything. There. So when we look at comparing both words, we're going to have a uh, total number of matches. So now we need a new variable, a float. Remember a float is a decimal number because we're going to be doing some division. So we want to take the uh, total matches and we're going to uh, divide that by the total letters. So that'll be our compatibility number. So it's a percentage from 0 to 100. I suppose we could give even greater than 100. Now just to see so we can do some testing, let's uh, do a toast here. So let's run this and see what the test comes out to be. So I've got George and Henoveva listed in my uh, two names. Let's do the compute. And it says your compute score or your compatibility score is zero. Something went wrong. Let's see what might have gone wrong. So we could come back into here and look at our data and see that we are doing some integer division here and we are converting it into a float. So what I need to do is I need to convert one of these guys or typecast them into a float before I do the division. Let's see if that helps. Okay, so I'm running the application again. I'm going to type George and Henoveva and do the compute and I'm getting a 0.85%. Okay, so that looks a lot better than what we had before at zero.